Hello and welcome back. I'm Mark from Design Optics Fast. Today we're going to be looking at the design of the color corrected landscape lens. The specification will be exactly as it was in the previous landscape lens design, except this time we're going to correct the color aberrations by making the landscape lens a doublet. And that gives us two glasses with which to compensate dispersion and also an additional surface to compensate other aberrations. So come on on and join me and we'll have a bit of fun with optimizing the color corrected landscape lens. So let's reopen the landscape template file we saved earlier and make the following changes in the lens data editor. Click anywhere on surface 4, the rear surface of the lens, and press the insert key. Make the radius of the new surface infinity, make its thickness 5mm and glass NF2. Make the radius and thickness of the new surface 4 variable. And that's it. We now have a template for the color corrected landscape lens. Note in the merit function editor that Optic Studio automatically added the boundary conditions for the new surface for us. Save this as color corrected landscape template.zmx. Now let's hit optimize. The merit function drops quickly to 0 0.0047. The spot size 15, 14, 26 microns, much better than the singlet landscape lens. Note that the first element still moves to the maximum allowed, but the second piece optimizes to a specific value, indicating that is where the chromatic control optimizes. Now let's compare the color corrected landscape with the original singlet lens landscape. Before we do that, Let's open the RMS versus wavelength and RMS versus field plots and set them to show spot size. You can immediately see the much greater chromatic correction of the color corrected variant. Set them to use 50 points across the scan so we can see the behavior of the spot easily and use a maximum scale of 25 microns for the color corrected and for the uncorrected one we'll use a scale of 70 microns. To see why we get such a big improvement, look at the seidel diagrams of the two designs. Note they both have the same scale and that the outer surfaces of the color corrected landscape are broadly the same as the two surfaces of the original landscape. The big difference is the middle surface, which adds aberrations to cancel out those aberrations of opposite sign in the other two lenses. The sum of all aberrations except distortion, which we chose not to control, and field curvature, which just goes as one over the effect of uh, focal length, are reduced. Now, of course, we could not have done this with two NBK7 surfaces cemented together. There must be a refractive index difference at the surface to refract, bend the rays. But why did I choose NBK7 and NF2? Well. Glasses with a K in the name are often the so-called crown glasses, which have relatively low index and lowish dispersion. Glasses with an F in the name are so-called flint glasses with higher index and higher dispersion. Choosing a K glass and an F glass is a good first guess. An NBK7 and NF2 are excellent workhorse glasses that have good optical properties, relatively low cost and an easy supply. But are they the best choice? Now, glass selection is different to optimizing radii and thicknesses because glasses only exist with discrete properties and you cannot simply modify them at will. The process of optimizing a glass in Optic Studio is called glass substitution and it works as follows. Use a glass substitution template to limit the choice of glasses to exclude expensive, exotic, or hard to process glasses. Also exclude glasses with incomplete data. Using the shot catalog, this gives us 52 glasses to choose from. I'm 
set a substitute solve on the glasses to be optimized. and use the hammer optimizer instead of the standard optimizer. Hammer is a more rigorous method and can handle the sudden jumps in performance that occur when glasses are swapped out. The merit function drops from 0.0047 to 0.0037 and the glasses change to NBAF10 and NSF6, both of which are F-series glasses incidentally. Also, one glass is at its thickest limit, the other is at its thinnest. Note also, we did not do anything to the merit function. Simply optimizing the RMS spot size averaged across the defined fields and wavelengths is all we need to do. There is no need for further chromatic targeting. This is superior to older techniques, such as requiring the effect of focal length to be the same at two or more intermediate wavelengths. These techniques were used when hand calculation was the design method, but now we simply optimize directly for the best spot size over the field and wavelength ranges required. And that, of course, is exactly what the pixels in your detector will see. So in terms of the specification, we are closer to, but we're still not achieving our specification of having the RMS spot size comparable to the diffraction limits. So let's use the make focal tool again to scale the lens and get some idea of just how far we have to go. Scaling by a factor of two to a 25 millimeter focal length gets us closer again. And you might argue that this is comparable to the Airy disc, but scaling to 15 gets us to a place where the spots truly are comparable. With the singlet uncorrected landscape, we need to scale to a 2.5 millimeter focal length to achieve this. So this basic shape is giving us an inherently better performance, but still for this specification is not giving us the performance we require. So we took the previous template for the landscape lens made of a single glass, just inserted one surface and then optimized it. Once it was optimized, we saw much better performance than we were getting with the singlet landscape, but we're still not in specification. Now the improved performance came from the improvements in chromatic control that using two glasses gives, plus the improvements in overall aberration control by having an extra surface. Having just guessed NBK7 and F2 as our glasses, we used glass substitution to choose the best glasses for this application. This improved the performance further, but still we didn't get to our specification. We then used the make focal tool to find that we had to scale down to about 15 millimeters focal length in order to get reasonable performance.